Good Sunday morning. It's something like the 23rd-ish, I think, of June 2019. Had a request by Scott on uh, my Dodger Davidson Facebook. That's what I use uh, as a uh, as a an adjunct to this on Facebook. Is that that appellation Dodger Davidson? Uh, just because they wanted a real name, you know, sort of, kind of. Anyway, um. So, friend me on there. Um, so, Scott, um, <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't go back and find you, so I tried, and I'm really bad on Facebook, so I'd, I'd say your whole name, but I couldn't find it. I don't even know where I got it, but it was just there. And you asked, Scott asked for something. Uh, he said, hey, man, can we do another video, uh, Saints Unscripted stuff? This topic, the three witnesses in the golden plates business, Scott wanted me to cover and I told Scott on there, you know, it's probably good for me to document things carefully when I'm dealing with these guys because they are in the apologetics business, which means they try to smear people, try to find any little thing wrong, and then draw the, the false conclusion that everything else you said was false. Uh, kind of like they did with, like, Zelf on the Shelf recently uh, regarding a Book of Mormon witness, Martin Harris, and his character. They picked one thing... Uh, that they could basically uh, show as being something that doesn't really meet the standards that uh, historians would like to use for, um, you know, uh, claiming that some, something had been, you know, stated uh, in, a, in some kind of authoritative manner that would have represented it. Basically, Martin Harris, you know, saying that, he's, that he was walking along with Jesus, who was in the form, who had shape-shifted, basically, into the form of a deer for several miles. And that's one that, you know, uh, anti-Mormonism uh, people, anti-Mormons uh, have liked to tout. Uh, however, it was, you know, shown by these guys to be, you know, say, you know, somebody said that somebody said kind of a thing. And uh, so what I'd say is that, that it actually does go nicely uh, into the narrative of many things that are established regarding the flippant uh, behavior and character of Martin Harris, but in and of itself or by itself, uh, without the, all the, the supporting narrative that it does fit into, uh, you know, regarding this character, you can't just say, oh, well, well this is what he's all about just because somebody said that he said this shit, right? So... We're doing this video on a basis that I am going off the cuff, and um, if I uh, misremember anything that I'm going to ask you to study and powerfully give some references where you can look for things, um, it's uh, we're doing it in in that in that uh, mode of no, I'm not just making wild claims. I'm saying yeah, I remember reading this or this, and here's where you can you can check the details on that. Because um, I just don't have the time to document right now today. Okay, so let's go. Credibility of the three witnesses, importance of their experience. Does it really validate the claim that the Book of Mormon is a true record of Israelites who came across the ocean 600 BC and those that came across about 2000 BC and have vanished without an archaeological or an anthropological trace. Oh, nice. Okay. Here we go. Uh, please, I want to leave. <laughs> um, it, very great musicality. Very talented people. Trey Parker, Matt Stone. Oh, right. I don't like the show. Um, well, it's pretty derogatory, you know, yeah. just in general. Like, like yeah. take away the, like, our church from it, it's, it's still... Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just <laughs> mean. Yeah. Like, it's just a mean thing. It's all. It also portrays you... It's just a mean thing. Okay, so so obviously, you know, it sounds like they're talking about, like, South Park or um, the, the Book of Mormon play or something like that. And, you know, Mormons are so persecuted. It's just not polite to talk, you know, meanly about Mormonism. It's, it's mean to disrespect their religion because religion is protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Therefore, it's wrong, right? Wrong. Mormonism in and of itself promotes, uh, how can I say this is Sunday morning, trying to make this Mormon friendly, urinating on people's beliefs, how's that sound? I was urinated off at them. Yeah, basically, um, what does it say? 
uh, all men were offended by him. Uh, speaking of Enoch, in uh, probably about the sixth chapter of the book of Moses, the, 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 the orders to the brethren to go out and declare the gospel without apology uh, is, tr is trampling people's beliefs. In Missouri, uh, the, the, you know, the, the revelations supposedly given to Joseph Smith were basically saying that the native inhabitants, well, the existing inhabitants, not only the native inhabitants, meaning the American Indians who had been there a lot longer, but but the <clears throat> but it was directed at the Missourians would be basically swept off the land unless they, you know, became good Mormons, um, as well as Mormons who were not giving up their property to uh, Joseph Smith and and uh, Sidney Rigdon at that time when Sidney Rigdon issued the um, the extermination order. Oh, wait, extermination order. Yeah, Mormons are conditioned to believe that's all about the governor. Well, the governor did issue his extermination order, and exterminate doesn't just mean to just go out and just necessarily just kill them as, as first uh, first option. But um, So that's often misconstrued as well. But the ex that, that followed Sidney Rigdon's 4th of July extermination order against any, anyone, I believe, in Cald Caldwell County who uh, didn't, like, you know, Obey Sidney, Joseph, and Hiram. Give them deed their property to the church and that sort of a thing. Which is why guys like W. W. Phelps and uh, I believe David Whitmer, one of the three witnesses, um, ran away because uh, Sidney said that their their lives that they they couldn't guarantee their safety if they were there longer than three days unless they deeded their property over. At least that's what I recall. Once again, could uh, could have a detail or two wrong there, but the gist of that is. The way it went. Continuing. There's like dumb savages. Like it's really true. This is an episode about the musical. We'll do an episode about that musical. Oh, that's so. Yeah, this yeah, this yeah. episode is actually about the some of the people who did see the plates right, that Joseph had. Plates. So we're going to talk about. They're known as the three witnesses. Three witnesses. Yes. Martin Harris, David Whitmer, and Oliver, Oliver Cowdery. Cowdery. So if you open up any copy of the Book of Mormon that's been printed recently, I, I mean within the last hundred years, years, you know, like you're going to be, it's going to be there. It's a page that says um, testimony of three witnesses. There's also one of um, eight. Witnesses, yes. but that they're two. Those are two different ideas because one of them is Joseph Smith. The eight witnesses, Joseph Smith, physically showing some people the, the plates, yes. right, with permission, you know, from Heavenly Father. That is okay because for the most part, he hadn't had permission to show it to anybody. You know, we've talked about that through the translation process and everything. But then there's the three witnesses, and their experience was a little bit different. It wasn't just Joseph Smith saying, "Okay, here's some some gold, my gold book I found." Um, they had a more heavenly experience. Yeah, they, uh, they got to see the plates, they got to feel the plates, and they got to see the angel right face to face. Yeah. But but what's really cool is that um, this wasn't just like a, like my eyes are closed and they like saw it in my head. Like it was like a straight up right. face to face, like the way I'm seeing you, right? Kind of thing. And and I all right, let's see if I recall this correctly. So the eight witnesses, the eight witnesses had um, <clears throat> some pretty interesting experiences. Okay. So, did they heft them? If they hefted them, they didn't see what they're hefting. Nobody hefted the plates and actually physically saw them. Okay? Anybody who picked up the plates was not picking up gold plates of that dimension because they'd weighed about 200 pounds. Church likes to tell us uh, all kinds of things, but the fact is, you know, now the apologists are trying to say, oh, it was some alloy. Some alloy. That's why Joseph Smith could could heft them. Or you you'll hear things like, oh well, you know, God gave him the strength to heft them when he ran down the hill with him and stuff like this. The fact is that contradicts uh, the angel or the messenger from the presence of God, who was Nephi sometimes, or who was Moroni sometimes. And these guys want to say that that Nephi is, 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 is debunked because Joseph Smith said Moroni some other time. Well, he didn't make a correction to the publications that he was chief editor of where he said Nephi and or it was copied from that to other LDS cop publications. So I didn't think they refuted that particular point perfectly. No, they kind of left out that detail. So anyway, that that messenger was supposedly very concerned as an angel, as a messenger from the presence of God, who's supposed to know his stuff pretty well. He was concerned that Joseph would, in fact, be tempted to sell the plates to get rich 
because they were what? Because they were pure gold, not some not some cheap, cheesy, worthless or nearly worthless alloy that would not get him rich. Of course, they always fail to mention that when they're trying to explain away how anyone could heft the plates. People that did heft what they were told were the plates, and they appeared to be plates as far as what they felt, but they were under a cloth, people. They couldn't see them. Figured they weighed something like 30, 40 pounds. Just about what tin would weigh in those dimensions given by Joseph Smith. Nothing like what gold would weigh. So those eight witnesses that we're really not talking about, uh, I believe they did do some hefting, but they didn't get to see what they were hefting. And when they got to see something, well, what was it? Yeah. They uh, were told, yeah, they're, they're going to appear magically in this chest or something. And they didn't immediately. So Joseph Smith makes these guys like pray on their knees for like forgiveness for their lack of faith and all this kind of huckster stuff that, you know, as part of his showmanship, after two hours or so on their knees, they're like, oh, yeah, we see him. Now, you know, can we like be done with this stuff? So that's pretty much how that story goes check that out uh like i said um well you know what? the easiest thing is, is to google stuff and you can find other people that have got resources on that one i don't think i've got that one down on uh, mormon truth videos gospel topics hub yet but uh, there are there are sources no man knows my history great source um fawn brody even though uh these guys will try to poo poo you know i gotta hate that word you know just just like oh you know diss her say oh they she's been dealt with she's not credible that's that's really that's really not the case at all what you find is is the the great percentage of what fawn brody uh puts is very credible but when you had when you had a uh, church apologist and Professor Hugh, Hugh Nibley attacking her credibility, which is Apologetics 101. Don't deal with the issues if you can, if you can attack the messenger uh, and smear them and then draw the conclusion, the false conclusion, that everything they say is false. If you can find one thing that you can find fault with, and the fault with Fawn Brody wasn't that they found that anything that I recall was erroneous. It's that they could say, oh, okay, well, it doesn't meet the standards for establishing uh, such and such a uh, particular uh, item in the footnotes as uh, meeting historical, uh, you know, criteria for credibility. In other words, was it hearsay? Was it, was it uh, secondhand or thirdhand or something like that on a few things? Like, but what, 95% of the stuff that she might say. Um, and I did just pull that. Oh, was it out of my hat? Sorry, Joseph. Um, that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here, that it, it's a principle, it's a concept. And so, yeah, she is a good source. Some people prefer the Mormon apologist, um, Richard Bushman, who's also a patriarch. And, uh, you know, in his rough stone rolling, some folks say it's hard to know where the facts end and apologetics begin. So in this case, these three dudes are supposed to have this heavenly vision where uh, Moroni comes down and uh, has a chat with him and whips out the plates and they check him out and all that stuff. Um, of course, Martin Harris didn't have enough faith at first, so <clears throat> he's separated and goes and repents for, for what? For his inability to believe unbelievable stuff. That's basically what this is, because faith is supposed to be a virtue, and faith is the ability to believe stuff that basically uh, isn't very grounded in evidence and or doesn't make sense. Uh, so in other words, it's a virtue in Christianity and basically maybe any of the Abrahamic religions to, be able to, to have the ability to be delusional. To delude yourself into believing shit that doesn't make any goddamn sense. Oh. Sunday morning, already used offensive language to Mormons. Let's keep going. I can't imagine. Um, I, I think it would be really cool because they've believed, you know. I mean, Martin Harris has put so much money in into this process, you know, of them translating and everything. And so to have their, you know, their faith almost rewarded in a very literal sense and that they were able to have like, this experience. You know, they were able to touch the plates. They were, they were able to know that, wow, yeah, the Book of Mormon 
really came from this ancient record. They saw this guy's got really strong fingers hefting this 200 pound uh, golden ancient Nephite record. I just like to note that. An angel, you know, Joseph Smith is kind of, if anything, it's like a stamp of approval from yeah. God. And, and I think that's important to have witnesses. I mean, how many times has the Savior talked about the need for witnesses? Two or three witnesses. Yeah. Right. Well, what's really also really cool is that this. How many times has the Savior talked about the need for witnesses? The law of witnesses, etc. That's interesting because it kind of contradicts the whole business about faith and it's contradicted in various apologetic arguments. But okay, now Jesus is giving us evidence? Because these dudes are so reliable, right? Martin Harris, David Whitmer, and Oliver Cowdery. Though Joseph Smith trash talks all of them and calls them liars, black legs, that's uh, well, something he called uh, Cowdery. And uh, yeah, and, and, and those things can be located uh, easily on the internet. Once again, I'm not doing that this time. I probably have done some of that in, in some of the videos, but let's continue. In other words, their character is in question. Their reliability of their testimony is extremely in question. Martin Harris joined like nine other churches after bailing the LDS church. As a matter of fact, I believe we'll find in church history that the three witnesses, all three of them, <clears throat> When Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon uh, hightailed it out of town, when the Kirtland not bank, when the illegal bank, when the Kirtland, uh, what is it, anti-banking safety society went under, the, 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 the bank, or not really a bank, that Joseph Smith told the saints God wanted them to invest in and use stuff out of the Old Testament, I think it was Isaiah, to justify and say basically the Lord speaking to you, invest in this bank. When it failed and people lost their fortunes and they left to avoid warrants, when they came back, the three witnesses and about 50% of the then remaining church in Kirtland were following a new prophetess, a 16 year old chick with a seer stone that she saw revelations in. Just saying. These guys. Gullible? Can anyone spell gullible? It's such an important event because, one, it's groundbreaking, right? Right. Um, many people can claim, I can claim that I saw. Um, you know, Jiminy Cricket appeared to me last night. He right. said, hey, you need to go buy all the candy canes. I could say that. Like, it happened. Gosh dang it, it happened. I don't care what anyone says. But, but who's I? I did, nobody's going to verify, right? Um, but you once you have witnesses who are sane people, um, who are not in it for money, who are who stuck with it for their entire life. Sane people? Okay. Martin Harris? Questionable. Not in it for money? Martin Harris mar mortgaged his farm for the printing of the Book of Mormon. It was a business deal. And what did he tell his wife? Who cares if Joseph Smith's a huckster or some shit like that? If we can make some money off it? Again, you'll have to find that quote. Um, it's not a quote, but something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I'm screenshotting things. as I. There's a lot of nice contributions made in... Uh, in Facebook on like apostates of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and I'm going to have to build a group I, I think I you know put it out there but didn't do anything to promote it uh, on Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub on Facebook or maybe it's just Mormon Truth Videos but I need to do that or with Reddit or something so we've got a gathering place to actually have open discussion that's not just video specific to one video so that you people will be able to see things that I see when I'm in YouTube Creator and I can see everybody's comments, but you're all separated on these little islands called the various videos. So, coming up, we'll do that. This life's just so filled with overwhelming stuff right now, it's hard to even imagine that. Um, probably not Jiminy Cricket, Candy Canes, <laughs> but something like an angel, something that right. we've seen, you know, in all cultures, this idea of, of an angel descending down, speaking to something. When this happens, in modern day and there's people who are like yeah that literally well, happened and without coercion you know yeah. like they're not they're, they're not gonna lose anything yeah if anything they're losing 
by testifying that this is true. Yeah. Oh, they lost a ton. You know, Martin Harris yeah. lost, I mean, didn't lose, but put so many resources yeah, into right. publishing it, the Book of Mormon. It at least makes you ask the question, all right, what happened? Because right. if, th if this did happen, it's a complete game changer for all of religion. Oh, like, definitely. Like, the, the, the debate on, like, who is right is significantly minimized <laughs> to, like, a couple... Um, and right now, I, I want to put something out here so that people notice. Because if you're alerted to notice something, then when it comes up, when these guys make time after time, uh, as with what the church has done, we hear things like, but the three witnesses never denied their testimony of the Book of Mormon, even though they were all excommunicated. You know, funny thing, I just read on Facebook, some guy posted, Spencer Kimball said being excommunicated, oh, Sam Young, is worse than death. Well, if you die as excommunicated, then yeah, basically you're somewhere between going to hell until you get into the Telestial Kingdom, or maybe you're going to be a, a son of perdition or something. So, they all got excommunicated, but they held on to that testimony. That just proves how much they believed it was true right and he's just said they didn't have anything to you know what do they have to lose well let's think about it their reputations yeah it's like they'd already gone against joseph smith for various other things mainly for his adultery uh that's that's the thing that i think all three of them but definitely david whitmer and oliver cowdery made statements regarding joseph smith's serial adultery that's the thing that they could not uh, bring themselves to uh, to support or or even you know as through a through just through association with Joseph Smith through because of the spiritual wife system which the church never talks about they they call it polygamy and that's Joseph Smith was not a polygamist uh, he did practice the spiritual wife system which is basically human trafficking enslaving girls as sex slaves hundreds of them in Nauvoo. But that's never where the discussion goes. Why am I the only one that talks about that? Why does everyone comply to keeping the conversation and the argument within the bounds that the Lord has set? That makes you think about who controls things and what a controlled resistance we actually have in the exiting of the church. So, um, on that particular point regarding those guys, here's the deal. Okay, they did have something to lose if they denied the Book of Mormon visitation on the plates. What they had to lose was their own reputations. That's what they had to lose. It's one thing to say, yeah, Joe is an adulterer, I will no longer support him, and I've been excommunicated. It's another thing to say, yeah, I lied about all that shit, you know, for whatever reason. Because he said he'd give me some money or hook me, you know, what, whatever it was. They had nothing to gain and everything to lose by denying that testimony, by saying yes, and, and when they say deny that testimony, this is like what Christians and, and, and what Mormons who feel, believe they're Christian or whatever, what, what's programmed into people's minds, thinking of Christians died for the faith. They wouldn't deny the testimony of Jesus Christ. And rather than do that, they'd be you know, crucified or eaten by lions and all these things like that. And so that's associated in your minds when they say they wouldn't deny the testimony. The testimony of what? They, 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 they didn't, they never admitted to the fact that they freaking made this shit up and they lied about stuff. That's, that is what they would be doing. And they have no benefit for doing that and everything to lose. So they, the apologists here have twisted that, as the church has in its literature and rhetoric all along. All you got to do is think about some of these things. Some of these things are presented. As, guys, let's be misogynistic here. How many times has your wife said, it's not what you said, it's how you said it? Okay, that's how this goes over on people. It's how they say this shit. It's like the 116-page manuscript. All right, they're like, oh my God, look, Joseph Smith said Satan was trying to be tricky, and then he was going to have somebody change what it said when they found the manuscript and compared it to the new translation. Um, 
So, instead, the Lord already had a plan in place, and what he did was have other plates of Nephi to translate. That way, Satan's plan is foiled. Well, if you think about that, for somebody to bring forth the things and have changed the manuscript in those days, they weren't using graphite pencils, folks. They didn't have, like, disappearing ink for it, and they didn't have magic make your ink erase without any smudge juice that I know of, okay? So someone would have had to do something to alter the words, erase them perfectly without a smudge, without leaving a trace, and then fit something different into the same space you know, on that manuscript, and absolutely uh, copy perfectly forge the handwriting of the scribe, be it Martin Harris, uh, you know, uh, Emma, whoever it would be. Uh, maybe that was all Martin Harris, maybe it was partly him. So if you really think about it, there's no way someone is going to pull that shit off. So Joseph Smith's story, once again, was complete bullshit. It's how you present these things, and then people are like, yeah, okay, whatever. No, if you think these things through, you can see through the showmanship. You just got to apply the effort to think some of these things through and maybe step by step see how that occurs. And then it plays out, and you're like, hey, this excuse is bullshit. All right, keep going. Religions, right? right? It's like this is a big, big deal, and, and so that's why you and, know, we talk about this. And lot. Joseph recognized that too. He, uh, I, maybe there's a quote or something we can throw up here, but uh, he was so relieved when he finally <laughs> got to show people the plates. Right. Well, can you imagine going all that time, just literally people thinking oh. you're insane? Oh, you, years. And, and I know, and I still thought he was insane, but to just like have at least a few people. Yeah, just let so somebody, somebody know that you're not yeah. lying. You know. Well, it's like, kind of like you know, remember the first time you get a girlfriend. And I'm sympathizing because I, I'm sympathizing here because I, I get called insane and shit like that, um, by apologists who try to smear me on the videos, uh, or has happened. Oh, Reddit, where I was attacked mostly by Freemasons. I've been kicked off like five out of the six Reddits I was on. Uh, Pro Mormon, you know, ex Mormon, Mormon, LDS, and Latter Day Saints. So you got the faithful and then Mormon politics. I got. I think I got kicked off all of those. Yeah, because I offended Freemasons. And who uh that's who attacked me. And then 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 I'd get some complete complete bullshit excuse uh and and false accusation uh you know from uh the uh, Reddit um monitors or whatever they call those guys. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, they want echo chambers in all those venues. They have very specific guidelines over what they want people to believe the case is, even on Ex Mormon. No one believes. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's usually better, but she goes to a different school. You like that, that guy? Yeah, Cassandra. This is everyone. Everyone. This is Cassandra. Yeah. But when you finally get a girlfriend, you're like, oh my gosh, I finally get to show my friends. Right. Hey, look, look at her. Hey, look, she's it, real. I got well, one. Well, you right? change your you change your Facebook profile, and there's actually yeah. a picture to put. Like, okay. Freaking All right. Out. He has a girlfriend. <laughs> I, I imagine it might. These guys are so annoying. I just had to say that. There, there, there's something screwed up with these guys. Where's Arnold when you need to call him girly man? It's been similar to <laughs> Facebook status. I saw the plates, you know, and then but, like, <laughs> and then the plot thickens though, because strangely enough, each of these three witnesses, all three of them, at some point in their membership of the church, were excommunicated from the church. Right, oh God, and not just fell away, like inactive, but like excommunicated. Yeah, like, I mean, some it says apostasy, you know, like they had beef with Joseph Smith. As yes, there were there were falling outs that happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what's even more significant is because one, Joseph Smith is put in this position where everyone, a lot of people hate him, right? He's he's. Right. Big news in the country. He's in like he'd be like trending top ten on Twitter, right? He'd be sure. like the like. And these people, when they left, they were now at an ability to say he paid us, he coerced us, right. he did he such us. They could, yeah, <laughs> because he did like he did treasure seeking and stuff before. They could have said he used some kind of spell. They literally could have done anything. They were in a position where they could have ruined this guy. They had every and, reason to. And they right. wouldn't. Everyone would have believed them. Everyone would have believed. Oh, yeah. the three witnesses recanted it and look. He could have used some kind of spell. Quacku said. What does that tell you about the credibility of a guy who even Kwaku, Kwaku, 
Quaku said they could have said he used a spell or something. And he's saying that in a way to say that, like, and people pretty much would have bought that. Meaning what? Meaning it was pretty well known what type of guy Joseph Smith actually was, that he was involved in the occult, which isn't supposed to be copacetic with Christianity. Although if you go back, you find the mystery religion roots of Christianity, and you, you get that. But Christians really try, especially now, to divide themselves. Not so much back then, actually. Uh, for some of the sects that, that, that we see doing some pretty weird shit. But then again, Pentecostal style stuff. These days, my stepmom speaks in tongues, which is basically demonic possession. And you can feel something pretty creepy around her. So they're saying all these little excuses that they could have made, but somehow they miss the fact that they would have destroyed their own reputations by saying, yeah, I made that shit up. For whatever reason, I have no integrity. And they had nothing to gain by saying that. So they're misleading us here. Look at what Joseph did to them. Right. And, and, history, and, and history would have held on to that forever. Oh, yeah. But they don't. Yeah. They all say, yeah, we had a falling out, but yeah, the angel was there. Like, I saw those plates. That just straight <laughs> up happened. Um, and there are, even, there are even experiences of people trying to say, hey, once upon a time, you know, David Whitmer said, once upon a time, David Whitmer denied his testimony. And then David Whitmer comes back and says, don't believe these people that are saying these things. I have not denied my testimony. This stuff actually happened. And it was at the end of his life that he said this. Yes. He doesn't have much time left. Not many more reasons to lie about it. Yes. Wait, did David Whitmer come back to the church? No. He made a public statement in saying, I have never at any time denied that testimony or any part thereof, which has so long been published with that book as one of the three witnesses. Those who know me best well know that I have always adhered to that testimony and that no man may be misled or doubt my present views in regard to the same. I do again affirm the truth of all my statements as then made and published. It's got like over 20 statements where he's like, this happened, people keep saying I denied it. No, right. not once, never. Excellent point. And isn't it strange that these guys who are supposed to be such good, honest Mormons are excluding the context of some of David Whitmer's most famous statements here. So, if he had admitted at that point and said, yeah, I made this shit up, I totally freaking lied about it, we're all a bunch of liars, he would have destroyed his credibility. But instead, he's leveraging that for credibility for the, his major premise. Remember, you give up a minor pre premise to establish your major premise sometimes in an argument, in debate. And what was David Whitmer's major premise? And why did he not come back to the church? And why are these guys not saying what it is? Well, it was that Joseph Smith was an adulterer, that he was a dishonest man, that he had the spiritual wife system going, that he destroyed illegally or illegally ordered the destruction of a printing press of William Law and his friends who published the Expositor. That's a violation of their First Amendment constitutional rights for freedom of press. It's also inciting a riot. Uh, it's also using police power um, in, a, a, in an unethical way, mis abuse of power. We call that in Mormonism, we tend to call that, what do we call it? Unrighteous dominion. So Joseph Smith essentially was violating the principles that he said he believed in as mayor of Nauvoo, ordering um, the destruction of that press or getting the council who will do anything he wanted them to do because he's the prophet of God, not just a political leader, but he is God's oracle, the vicar of God, as the Pope is called, on the earth. And these people are going to back him that he has in these positions of power in the city council. They illegally destroyed the printing press, which stated Joseph Smith was an adulterer, that he was involved in the, that he had the spiritual wife system going. Sorry! Just a Navy invasion here. All right. Out my way. People in San Diego, you will not be invaded by Iran today. We've got F-14s in the air. Okay, so, um, 
did they destroy my train of thought there? I may have to pause for just a second. Yeah, so David Whitmer, uh, in, in his uh, what's it called, an, an address to all to all believers in Christ or something. There's an actual name of his uh, this this uh, statement that he made uh, regarding his position on Joseph Smith and uh, a, 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 and whether or not he was a prophet. Remember the whole idea. The biggest reason the church uses the Book of Mormon it's it's a tool that is used to get people to believe that Joseph Smith is a prophet of the Israelite God. You know, they say, read the Book of Mormon, if the Book of Mormon is true, Joseph Smith is a prophet, if the, Joseph Smith is a prophet, the church is true. All of which are fallacious statements. However, the premise of this whole thing was to say Joseph Smith is not a prophet or is a fallen prophet. So Joseph Smith is being said to be a fallen prophet because of his adultery by David Whitmer, but he's upholding his statement that he at one time was a true prophet and brought forth the Book of Mormon uh, by the means so stated because his reputation depends on it and he ain't, he's going to ruin himself. Ruin himself if he says, no, I lied about all that shit. You know? So, that's... Um, that's where we stand on that. But they don't want to bring up the fact that Joseph Smith is an adulterer. They don't want to bring up the, 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 the they don't they don't mention the name of, of, of the statement uh, an address to all believers in Christ. Because if you read it, David Whitmer lays out why Joseph Smith is a scumbagging piece of crap. That's why. That's gonna be more harm than good to Mormonism, so they exclude that. They're very selective here with the uh, things that they state because they state what is beneficial to the church's name, not uh, state things as they are and as they are um, applicable to, to the subject that's being discussed. These guys are very misleading. Bad boys. No temple recommend. You're dishonest. Bruce McConkie would say you're dishonest because you are withholding pertinent information. You are, you are uh, by, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a lie because you just didn't tell the whole truth, but the truth so help you. That guy who was talking to Abraham and, uh, yeah, the Holy Ghost with his pants off and facsimile too. Okay. Next. It's just so interesting because, like, it's one thing to say, like, the Book of Mormon isn't true. Anyone can say that. But, like, if you actually have to, like, explain how Joseph Smith made up this book, especially with these witnesses, like, it gets so yeah, it's messy. impossible. Because, like, like, so here another, uh, another classic mind control move here. How Joseph made up this book. Well, Right there, that includes the statement, the assumptive statement that Joseph Smith did make up the Book of Mormon. I personally don't believe that he authored the Book of Mormon. Also, of course, don't believe that it was authored by Nephites. Um, I believe that uh, he may have, he, that he probably helped with it, but that he wasn't necessarily the main writer of it, and that there were multiple writers of it. And I believe that many of them, or some of them, I can't say many, I don't know that there were many people, but, <clears throat> yeah, and I, I know they say there's like 13 different writing styles or something like that, right? Uh, Smith family members that were much more educated than Joseph Smith, his, his position was as a front man. His skills were not necessarily those of writing this, but he was, uh, uh, he, he was a good con man, a good, a good orator, and, um, yeah, he, he, he had different skills. As we find that he's stuck with himself to do the Book of Abraham, he really screws that up. There's so much in it that is, you know, provably false information, uh, whether it be linguistic uh, or historical anachronisms, whether it be just completely false definitions of words, of things, you know, um, it's ridiculous. And then you know, creating the Egyptian alphabet uh, translation to go along with it to supplement it 
in which he got, uh, yeah, a hundred percent of it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> love it. <clears throat> okay. Um, don't let your children watch pornography. Don't let them look at facsimile to figure seven. Even if it's small and upside down, it's still a guy with his pants off in a state of sexual excitement, and it's your dear heavenly father, according to Joseph Smith. And his name's Elohim. Meaning the gods. Wow. Okay. Let's continue. What are the options? Like, either they were in on it, or they were tricked. Right. If they were in on it, why didn't they deny their testimony? Why didn't they just say, hey, such and such happened, we got duped, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah. And especially the fact that, I think most specifically with David Whitmer, who never came back to the church, because the other, Oliver Cowdery, Martin Harris, they were excommunicated, but they came back. Right. You know, they had their journey, their testimonies were, like, they, they, their testimonies were destroyed, but then they rebuilt them and came back. But David Whitmer, he, he never came back. They rebuilt their testimonies? That's kind of an assumption right there. Oliver Cowdery was in on it. He was in on it. I believe he was in on the creation of the Book of Mormon, for one thing. He was in on the banking scam stuff with Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith was made the, uh, what was he, the treasurer, or whatever the hell he was. You know, some some major officer there of the, um, of the Kirtland Anti-Banking Safety Society, where they had the, the you know, the the plates made up and stuff, not the gold plates, but the plates made up to print their worthless money, okay, as the Kirtland Bank, and then uh, he sent one of the guys, I don't know if it was Cowdery or who it was, to uh, the um, governing authorities of the state of Ohio to obtain a bank charter, and they were denied. Now you might hear, oh, it's all persecution, a lot of banks were getting denied, it was a time when there was a lot of speculation in the money market uh, and crap hit the fan and Heavenly Father wasn't uh, wasn't wasn't looking in his personal Urim and Thummim so he set the Saints up for disaster because he told them through Joseph Smith to invest in this fake bank in this illegal bank and uh, they got hammered when there were banking crisis issues at that time when there was economic fallout and the reasons that they were creating this bank, have, some of them having to do with uh, land speculation in escalating property values around the Kirtland area, especially since they were driving the market upward by uh, recruiting people from Europe uh, to the church with whatever claims they were making there, and then buying up property and then selling it to their new converts at a higher price. Nice. That's the way Jesus wants you to do it, boys. So, Cowdery was running another bank, I think further north, I don't know, doesn't matter what direction it was, somewhere else at the time. Uh, and they were somewhat in cahoots, I believe. Uh, so, Cowdery was involved in a lot of things. And then Joseph Smith stated that, that, that Oliver Cowdery was a black leg, which is a bad thing, apparently, uh, that he was a liar and a counterfeiter. Now, it's interesting that Joseph Smith and many of the apostles were accused of being involved in counterfeiting and minting fake money by Joseph Jackson, Joseph H. Jackson, who in his sworn testimony after, he, basically, he went undercover in Nauvoo to find out what the hell was really going on. He was not a Mormon, but he was a confidant of Joseph Smith. He claims to be hired by Joseph Smith to assassinate the governor because Porter Rockwell, who was uh, commissioned to do so by Joseph Smith and was a Danite and was a, a known hitman for Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, failed. He shot the governor successfully three times and he didn't die. He was jailed, but they couldn't find his weapon. He eventually got off, but Joe hired Joseph H. Jackson, who convinced him that he was uh, one of his own type of criminals who said that Joseph Smith and in the in, 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 in the inner circle there were running a criminal operation and networked with others goes well with the stuff I say in my uh, uh, videos on the uh, pedophilia network that the LDS Church is involved with. So um, Joseph Smith hiring hitmen. Joseph Smith bad person, 
and bad-mouthing his own par partners like Oliver Cowdery, calling him a very dishonest person. He called Whitmer bad names, and he called Harris mad names, and said he was a wicked man, but that was Jesus telling him that, right? So Jesus uses a wicked man, a black leg, a counterfeiter, liars, a, all these sorts of bad things. Joseph Smith badmouthed all these guys as people who are not at all credible. But those are our three witnesses. Okay? If you do the research, you will find statements from Joseph Smith. Things are a lot different than the way they're presented in church history. The credibility of these guys was basically annihilated in the minds of anyone who believed Joseph Smith who said they're all pieces of trash. But oddly, these guys aren't bringing these facts up because they don't support their position. So their position is not one of honesty here. It's one of selection, careful selection of items that fit into the narrative that they want to push. And that's exactly what you find in all the church manuals as well selectively cherry-picking the things that support what they have to say if they're in the scriptures and avoiding things like I don't know turning uh, all the people of Canaan the Can or the Canaanites black so that all people would despise them uh, because uh, they'd kill the people of Shem do you ever see that in your Sunday school lesson when you're when you're when, when you're doing uh, you know the chapter the book of Moses no you don't why can't imagine why. Yeah, you know, so to have no faith in this religion or in the people leading it, but to never deny that, it's like, it kind of baffles me, honestly, that yeah. he... Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, well actually, there's... I, so for fun, sometimes I like to read, like, arguments conspiracy against... Conspiracy theories? Yeah, and they, that's literally what they are. They're Alex Jones-style conspiracy <laughs> theories. Oh, my God. They're Alex Jones conspiracy theories? <laughs> we know we can't believe anything he says. Well, he actually does say some true things. Although, I think he's disinformation. After all, it wasn't Clear Channel, like where he was starting off at least. And if you do your research and follow the money, yeah, you can see that they're part of the elitist establishment that the conglomerate that controls our media. That's why if you... You can go on YouTube and find stuff where you will find clips. You will find clips, okay, of newscasters who are trying to sound like they're being spontaneous about a particular news item, like 20 of them, all say the exact same words on different networks even. It's mind-blowing. You think group mind control doesn't exist? You think you're getting the straight stuff? You think these people are having actually candid and spontaneous conversations with Greg Gutfield and those The Five on Fox News? Do they still exist? No, a lot of this stuff is so scripted, and these pe so many of these people are MK'd that it's unreal. Um, one, you have that Joseph Smith just drugged them, but somehow they all saw the same thing. Right, right. Another one, no time. joke, is that he hired a dude to dress up like an angel and had someone lower him from, and I just read this on a formal line, but Joseph had a dude lower an angel on a rope and get them like kind of like high, more, so they're like, well. <laughs> Oh, ha, 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 isn't that funny? That's crazy. No one with the integrity of Joe Smith would do anything like that, huh? Okay, well, I'm not going to comment on that particular issue, but I did read one. I know, once again, we can look and see if it's hearsay or whatever, but it does go... That, that is not below Joseph Smith. That, what is beneath a guy that enslaves these women in Nauvoo? Nothing, basically, you know, or has his abortion doctor become a second counselor in the first presidency, John C. Bennett. So, um, yeah, I remember reading, and this would have been Fran Brody's No Man No My, My History, that he did this walk on water thing, yeah, where Joe put like a plank like two inches under the water or some shit like that, and yeah, like it failed and he fell in or something. I forget what it, what it was. Anyway, can't vouch for the you know, the historical uh, reliability quotient, <laughs> whatever, you know, I, I, I don't, on the sourcing of that, but it's interesting to read, and uh, it, it, that book is a very worthwhile read, and I think at least 90% of it is probably just obliterating uh, any possibility 
that the narrative of an all-knowing, unchanging, righteous God guides righteous brethren in the LDS Church. Kind of like what one guy said one time uh, in uh, when 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 Mormon uh, Mormon think used to have a bunch of of uh, people's written stories in it a lot more than it does now. And this one guy said, you know, if 10% of this shit's true, the, there's no way that the church is true. And I'm like, how many times does Jesus have to lie? It's only one. It's only one. And he ceases to be God according to his own words. And we've seen that over and over and over. So, no, this is not beneath Joseph Smith. We can use the tactics here. Find the, create maybe a straw man. And basically characterize, characterize, you know, others as oh well see what kind of crazy shit they use as evidence that's like the joke we're saying oh yeah the mormons ravage the girls in the temple and then they throw them out the window in the salt lake ha 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 it's 40 miles away how could that be stupid anti-mormons that's creating a straw man and that's very possibly what's going on here that's the effect that this is having find the the, the 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 argument or the position that looks like they can attack it and associate anti-mormons with it because we're not credible we're just all pieces of shit theater like joseph smith is performing theater tricks in the woods to like there's no good dismissal right. of it you I, there isn't um it's either they're lying and we don't see that from the evidence that they, they were lying or that they right. were deceivers or that they even had, a, even had a history of lying. And we don't see um, that they were drugged. Right. There's no good explanation well, of that they saw. Well, even in the 1800s, like, this, is, this isn't inception, you know, they didn't have these resources, you know, it's yeah. just like, and, and these were We don't have evidence, the history, evidence, they like to use these words that sound credible, doesn't suggest or demonstrate them to be liars. Joseph Smith said they were liars. How's that work in this narrative? And then, of course, the other guy's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's subliminal, but it goes into your head. The techniques that are used here are a little advanced um, for these guys to just, you know, know them all on their own in how they present in ways that your gullible young people, especially whom they are targeting, will think, yeah, these guys are pretty fucking reasonable. Sorry for the F bomb. I'm really, you know, I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to make this so that Mormons can learn how full of shit their prophets are, and not be offended before they, uh, you know, see some things. Don't don't want them to. Don't want you Mormons to have an early withdrawal on this. It's farm. It's Get just the full people. benefit. There's ex extraordinarily normal people, which I think we forget sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So Joseph Smith, he, I mean, he himself was just a farm. Boy, like he was in his early twenties, younger than I am right now, actually, right? What, when he did when what? He, when he showed them the, the plates and everything. Uh, I, I haven't even graduated. Joseph saw God. <laughs> anyway, anyways, but like it's just Whatever crazy. Do, like, yes, smiles, he, had these he was called as a prophet, but he yeah. wasn't that educated. Still, he was he was very fallible. And if anything, that's kind of led to why these guys left the church because because they had such a hard time with how Joseph Smith ran things, and they weren't they they called him out on his humanity, you know. And humanity, you know, like knocking up his 16-year-old maid and his wife throws her out in the middle of the freaking night when she's pregnant. Pregnant for a while. So obviously this isn't like when she caught him in the barn doing what she called, did she say horizontal polka? Nah, what did she say? Doing the transaction. That's, I believe, what she allegedly said to, you know, just some guy called, uh, Ah, <sighs> William McClellan. You can't trust him. He was just an apostle. But, you know, he left the church, so that means he's aligned with Satan. You know. Had nothing to do with the fact that he knew Joseph Smith was an adulterer and his wife had uh, told him about it. And, uh, yeah, you know, no, no good reason. He just aligned up with Satan. That's all. You know? Just like all us apostates. We're aligned with Satan. Who is not Lucifer, by the way, if you read the Bible? Yeah, the, 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 there, there's nothing there that really... Not like the Bible's true either, but they're going to pretend it is. And maybe that was the problem. Maybe it was that they had such a strong... Like they had a physical witness of, of the Book of Mormon, and maybe they had a hard time reconciling the Joseph's fallibilities with this physical witness that they'd received. Like yeah. humanity's best efforts versus... Humanity's best efforts is not... 
banging your 16 year old maid in the barn behind your wife's back 10 years before or yeah 10 years before you're, there's a claimed uh, revelation on polygamy and a year or two before you're even saying that you've got this priesthood to seal people together we just retroactively take that shit and, and then say that he was married to her she was his first polygamous wife if that was the Lord's way why did the prophet's wife throw her out in the middle of the night well in God's patriarchal church the woman was wearing the seat the, 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 the pants there and she told Joe what was going to happen sometimes like told him you're going to get rid of this bar you just built in the mansion house or I'm leaving with the kids and uh, guess what happened yeah <clears throat> Joe got around but at home he was whipped God, right, no. God had shown them that they could travel like anybody. Yeah, like, that's the way things go. And so maybe yeah. that's what was hard for them because um, Oliver Cowdery and Martin Harris, I think eventually they were able to overcome that, but they had to go through a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, the reality is when you have a vision like that and you know that the Book of Mormon is true, right, you've seen an angel, you're, you're never going to deny that. And again, uh, another quote by David Whitmer um, is he says, when you know that the book is true, but the book is self-contradictory and contradicts other LDS scripture. The doctrines taught in it are different than the doctrines that are taught today in the LDS church. So these simplistic, stupid statements like the book is true are ridiculous, okay? I say it over and over again, Ether chapter 3 is, is, is rich. Ether chapter 3 tells us that Jesus, who is also God the Father, according to verse 14 in that, in that chapter, tells the brother of Jared that he's the first and only person to ever see him. And that the reason is, which we find in verse 9, accompanying verse 15, making that statement, is that he's the only one who had had sufficient faith. And what had he accomplished with that faith as evidence of it? He had moved mountains and rivers. Those are the exact same feats accomplished 1,100 years or so earlier in our fake timeline here by Enoch, the seventh patriarch, I believe, You'll find that in the Book of Moses, canonized as LDS Scripture, the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, the first uh, eight, seven or eight chapters, I believe, are found in LDS canon. The rest of it, they didn't seem to get back from the reorganized church, which is now the Church Community of Christ. And it states that... God, or Jesus, who seemed to be synonymous at that point in LDS theology, spoke face to face with Enoch, and he saw him, for he spoke with him as one man speaketh to another. Right there, a perfect example of Mormon scripture being self-contradictory. And we've got Mormon doctrine being taught in there, at that point, which was that God the Father and Jesus Christ are one in the same individual. Okay, so the book is true. How is it true? Is it also true that, that, they, that they were making steel weapons, Kwaku? That they were riding horses? That they, they, had, they had chariots? They had civilizations which have vanished without a trace. Mm-hmm. And they spoke French, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Uh, Jacob chapter 7 or something? I bid you adieu, brethren. Is that where it is? Shit, I don't even remember. Anyway, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Not to mention the fact that they've got 19th century arguments in it. They're talking about New Testament stuff, New Testament arguments, the, the grace versus... And you know, and mercy versus judgment and works arguments. Uh, they've got 
pretty much close to almost or direct quotes from New Testament story characters in there and they're mentioning Jesus Christ in there in the Old Testament timeline those are all completely anachronistic you've got direct copies out of the 1769 Book of Mormon uh, King James version that Joseph Smith's family just by coincidence happened to have at home in the Book of Mormon you've got mistranslations from that particular version of the Bible in the Book of Mormon you've got stuff in the Book of Mormon that Joseph Smith that, that's copied out of the Bible that Joseph Smith later changed in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible because it didn't reflect supposedly the truth that was originally on the plates of brass or the Jewish Talmud before the Catholic Church supposedly got a hold of it and changed it corrupted it but the corrupted shit is in the Book of Mormon yeah it's true all right guys sure here's all we know we know that your Holy Ghost testifies that things are true which are provably false so your witness of the Spirit is worth about as much as uh, a banknote from the Kirtland Anti-Banking Safety Society was after the bank folded. I was not under any hallucination I saw with these eyes. Because oftentimes, you know, they'll say spiritualize, right? Because oh, they're sure. quoting scripture. Spiritualize right. is a scriptural term. But they had to also go out of the way and be like, hey, by the way, this wasn't like a, like a, ooh, uh, uh, Martin Harris, however, one of the three witnesses, said that that is exactly what the case was that he did not see them with his natural eyes but he did see them with his spiritual eyes pretty sure that's really close to an exact quote he said he saw them with his spiritual eyes indicating it was a vision not that he actually saw what he said he saw like face to face i saw this thing right and if that happened game changer but yeah, and I just kind of want to finish with the last no, things that no, Oliver Cowdery said before he died. He was talking to uh, another member of the church, and he just said, Brother David, be true to your testimony of the Book of Mormon. You know, then that was his la the last thing he said before he died. And then Martin Harris, um, same thing, right before he died, said, I tell you of these things that you may tell others that what I have said is true, and I dare not deny it. I heard the voice of God commanding me to testify to the same. And these men were witness. Martin Harris heard the voice of God on some pretty bizarre shit, too. Besides... God's not a credible individual if you read the Old Testament. Um, Oliver Cowdery was then a member of the church, was he not, when he stated that, you know, so what does that prove? Joseph Smith already said he's a piece of crap, okay? He joined back the church after Joe was uh, dead, I believe, right? So, um, mm -hmm. his biggest issue was with Joseph's adultery, even though I personally think Oliver Cowdery was definitely in on the Book of Mormon scam, presenting it as what? Proof that Joseph Smith was an amazing guy, a true prophet, who was able to raise up a church that people should contribute tithing money to, and show us, as proof of that, where the American Indians actually came from. Well, they came from Israel. That's what the Book of Mormon teaches us, and that was a subject of some concern in those days. So the Book of Mormon was proving its authenticity and proving Joseph Smith to be a divine, a, a divine messenger, essentially, by showing us where the American Indians come from, and uh, you know, mentioning conspiracies uh, or the the conspiratorial theme of that was, uh, you know, a, a matter of public concern with regard to the Freemasons and the Illuminati at that time. It is still, but it was at that time, and it was big news because right before Joseph Smith claimed to have, uh, you know, at right, after, right before he published the Book of Mormon, maybe, a, I don't know, was it a year before? Something like that. Um... Not long, maybe, no, maybe back in 1826. So anyway, about the time they lost the manuscript, oddly, and maybe changed the theme from pro-Masonic to anti-Masonic. Don't know about that. That's theorized. That's conspiracy theory. 
Captain William Morgan, who may not have even been a captain, was killed, was murdered, or at least it looks like he was. He definitely disappeared, his body washed up, and the Freemasons who were responsible for it all walked. Or close to walk. They didn't get anything close to a death sentence. No, 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 they didn't. And why did this happen? Well, because they revealed, because he, Captain William Morgan, who's Joseph, who, who, who Joseph Smith, who, who, whose widow Joe got to, by the way, uh, she said he was banging her, basically. Said she, he, he told uh, Orson Pratt's wife that he'd been, she'd been his mistress for three years. Because, yeah, she, she and her new hubby joined the church, and and Joe and, and Emma lived with them. Mm. You don't want Joe living anywhere you, near where your wife is if, you, if you're into monogamy. Meaning, not that he's a polygamist, but that he's going to be banging your girl. Okay, so Captain William Morgan revealed the signs, tokens, and penalties, and names of signs, probably, associated with certain degrees, most likely in the Blue Lodge, of Freemasonry. Those Blue Lodge signs, tokens, and penalties found their way into the Latter-day Saint endowment seven weeks after Joseph Smith learned them when he was initiated and somehow miraculously achieved the third degree, the sublime degree, the degree of Mace, Master Mahon. Oops, sorry David Icke, I mean Master Mason in Freemasonry, the nights of March 15th and 16th. So the 16th he became a Master Mason. Coming up with three degrees in that amount of time is pretty amazing, but maybe Joe had a photographic memory which he would have been able to use in his hucksterism in front of the Whitmer family pretending to uh, be coming up with uh, these verses in the Book of Mormon from a seer stone in his hat to be convincing them that it was divinely inspired because that was perfectly okay back then to believe that that's how people were gaining credible information through witchcraft. Um, and Joe was, you know, known to practice witchcraft, necromancy, and uh, scrying. So that was, pr the, the main idea was to trick the Whitmer family into believing that he was actually gaining the Book of Mormon by divine means. And he probably had memorized portions and had a photographic and amazing MK Ultra style memory of of the things that that more educated people in his family and possibly Cowdery could have been involved. Maybe even maybe even Rigdon, who we are led to believe just met him later, but there's reason to believe that's not necessarily the case. Um, concocted. So it's a complicated story. At any rate, Joseph Smith was an extremely dishonest person and he could come up with this kind of things but they 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 tended to show him up in the long run as being completely fallacious whether it's his Egyptian alphabet that was completely false whether it was him stating that the book of Abraham was written by the hand of Abraham which the church now admits was a total freaking lie uh, and they just say, oh, well, he just was inspired by this completely unrelated, non-contemporary with it, like 2,000 years written, 2,000 years later, Book of Breathings, Egyptian religious stuff that has zero to do with what's in the Book of Abraham. Um, yeah, whether it's that or, or saying that, you know, Pharaoh means king by royal birth instead of great house, or that Egypt means that which is forbidden, you know, rather than whatever the hell it, it means, uh, which I know, but can't dig up right this sec, maybe. I mean, all you gotta do is fact check this boy, and he's full of it. And unfortunately, these guys are very, very misleading in this case. And there was one more point I was going to make, but I have apparently managed to ramble to the point where I have no freaking idea what it was. This is literally until the day they died, and 
And I think history will show they were fallible. They were human. They weren't perfect. Their testimonies weren't perfect. Like, but that. T- and then Martin Harris, um, same thing. Right before he died, said, "I tell you of these things that you may tell others that what I have said is true." And I dare not deny it. I heard the voice of God command me to testify to the same. And these men were witnesses, literally until the day they died. And and I think history will show they were fallible. They were human. They weren't perfect. Their testimonies weren't perfect. Like. But that testimony didn't change. Yeah, and if history is telling us something, it's saying that there's something going on here right. that is out of the ordinary. Yeah, you know, and definitely worth looking into. You know, like yes, question, like, please. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, one, if it happens, there's a God. Period. That's just all <laughs> like, well, what if it doesn't matter? Like, this straight up, there's a God. Um, two, there's another record in addition to the Bible that is true. Right. Um, Am I gonna get into the fact that the Bible is a bunch of shit? It's a bunch of fairy tales. The Book of Mormon debacle with the fact that the DNA of the Native Americans is not Israelite, but 99.4% of the people taste tested of these Native American tribes turned out to uh, demonstrate clearly that they came from Siberia about 9,000 years before Adam was supposed to be in the Garden of Eden in Jackson County, Missouri. They were not washed away by Noah's fake news flood, which didn't destroy them. It didn't destroy the Egyptians, because we have history going right through that time in Egypt, or the Babylonians, or the Sumerians, or the Chinese, or pretty much anybody except for maybe Not at that time, but at another time, there were floods that were local, and the and the legends of them have 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 continued with us, and and uh, you know been changed and altered. But Joseph Smith translated the Bible, using the word translation extremely loosely. He gave us what God the Israelite God wanted us to have back in it, those evil Catholics from the church, the great and abominable church of the devil, took out of it. Except, of course, the Old Testament basically is still in the Talmud, and you got all kinds of shit from the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. It basically confirms that it hasn't changed much. (laughs) Um, So, that Joseph Smith translated fully affirms that Noah's flood was totally real, that it happened chronologically when it said, and it was worldwide. And they've thrown the baby out with the bathwater, trying to save the Book of Mormon by saying that the, the DNA from the Book of Mormon people was lost because there was a huge pre-existing population of these Native Americans. They're more Native than white folk because They got here, like, starting 15,000 years ago, supposedly. And these guys just disappeared into these people who obviously weren't washed away by that flood. They just don't mention that little fact. Just like they try to be, you know, not covering too many of the details in the the Bible dictionary on LDS.org or in your quadruple combination, you good Mormons. When you look at the Bible Dictionary of Egypt, which starts to talk about the dynasties coming down from about 3000 BC, and then it sets to like the 18th dynasty, and you know, whenever the hell that was, you know, uh, 1600 BC or something like that, going down, you know, it doesn't, but, 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 but it doesn't go like dynasty after dynasty. It just kind of tries to not put in too much detail so you don't notice there was. No flood wiping out the entire civilization of the Egyptians, 2344 B.C. They just kind of ignore that whole thing. Even though the book of Abraham, chapter 1, tells us that the land was still covered by water when Egyptus got there and then took her sons there to repopulate the land in a story that's complete and total bullshit and contradicts history, and history is a lot closer, at least what we accept or are told as history, to what's in the Bible Dictionary than the Book of Abraham, which it completely and totally contradicts. Joseph Smith was full of shit. He was not an honest person, and the Abrahamic God 
the the the, the god that is the it, it, that is worshipped supposedly as Allah by the Muslims, as Yahweh by the Jews, and uh, as whoever the hell God the Father and by some is God Jesus the Holy Ghost three in one like the Egyptian Trinity, similar not exactly the same folks. Is a guy who was manufactured in in cults that that predate even the history of even even the timing that works with uh, the creation story of the world, which of course is complete horseshit as well. What is it like? Day four, God creates the rest of the freaking universe. Why is that? Because the planets, the stars, and all that shit, the sun and the moon. They're only created for this Earth because it's an Earth-centric, flat Earth creation. It is not. It, it is not congruent with the model of science that we're given today by our Freemason masters. And he and he creates the whole rest of the universe from like day four, because that makes so much sense. You know, you create this Earth. And then as a part of the grand design of the creation of the center, the most important thing in the universe, this Earth, he creates all the planets and the stars. Day four. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay, I, I'm getting almost a little bit wandering here, but what the, the, the whole purpose of these three witnesses is also the Book of Mormon's true, and the Book of Mormon's true, so that means Joseph Smith's a prophet, which is fallacious bullshit. And that means the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is God's one, the, this God. We say God as if he's a real deal. One and true vehicle for returning to the land of pa spiritual pa paradise in the sky near Kolob. Where you can someday get your own planet and then your own galaxy maybe. Meaning that our God is basically just the God of this galaxy because... He's the child of another God. And he, he worked out his salvation on another world and then had baby Jesus named Jehovah. Except for Jehovah, the name wasn't invented until the 13th century by an occultist who turned, who was a Catholic monk named Raymond Martini. So that's a little anachronistic to find in the Book of Abraham or the Book of Mormon, which it is in both of. Because Joseph Smith didn't know that Tyndale, in his translation, substituted the newfangled terminology of Jehovah for Adonai or you know Elohim or whatever the Jews were using as titles to substitute for the name of Yahweh because they don't want to piss him off because he kills people. So there you go. Joe Smith, full of it. Bible stories, fairy tales, Bible God, evil murderer who has his prophets commit mass genocide give the virgins because they kill the moms they don't want those licked cupcakes for his soldiers they kill the dads because they're evil because they're defending their wives and kids and they kill the boys because you know, they're just going to be boys you know who wants more competition and then they get all the unsexed girls and give them to the soldiers because and that, well, they wouldn't rape them or anything, would they? That's Soldiers don't rape girls. And they just give a few to the priests to maybe toy with for the night and then use them as heave offerings, which means they're being sacrificed on altars along with other animals they gave as heave offerings. If you're an offering in ancient Israel, it, it doesn't end well. You know, it, it doesn't. And unless your idea of ending well means being barbecued and eaten by priests. So, um... Yeah, and time after time, genocide's ordered because we don't tolerate other religions. My friends coming out, uh, they're upset with me, you know, uh, for posting a picture of me flipping off the LDS temple, which was meant for and also uploaded to, but somehow I was half asleep maybe and, and stuck it on my, my Dave page. They're a little offended. You know, but I was, I have just kind of come out this last week and said, yeah, I do the Dodger Game channel and Mormon Truth videos, gospel topics of people. And here I put me flipping off the temple and some of them were, that offends my religion. Dude, your religion offends me. And your God told you to go out and offend people, whether they like it or not, and preach repentance. And the Book of Mormon teaches that anybody who doesn't believe in Jesus is a piece of shit. So that's offensive to the rest of us. And sorry, guys. 
That's just the way that it is. Your God promotes mass murder, rape, and human sacrifice. It's all through the Old Testament, and your Jesus dude in Mormonism is that guy. Other people might just want to say, well, you know, that's his heavenly father. Well, guess what? Jesus approves of his heavenly father's works. He talks good about the God of Israel in the New Testament. Any way you put it, whether it's association or whether it's him or, or whether he's the magical three in one dude, it's all part of the Jewish, the Abrahamic murder cults which have no religious tolerance. So when you want to talk about, I should tolerate your religion, remember, whenever Yahweh's got control, people are human sacrificed, they're murdered as a group activity for not keeping the Sabbath day worship, worshiping this narcissistic, psychopathic God. And Brigham Young wasn't much different with his destroying angels, the Danites, guys like uh, Bill Hickman, Porter Rockwell, and... Uh, uh, what's the guy that he probably axed Samuel Smith with after he got Joe and Hiram wasted? Oh! Anyway, we know who it was. Hit it when those things happen. I can't remember shit, but... I got can't remember shit disorder this morning. And I'm out. Have a great Sunday. Make it a good one. Go spend time with your family at the beach and don't waste your time or money promoting beliefs that destroy human lives in the Mormon church. In the name of reason, Dodger Game says, subscribe, comment, and share. The testimony of these three guys immediately just like slices the argument. Oh my God. It just slices the argument. Later, Quacky.